Hello everybody and welcome to the FPGA stand up for the 19th of April 2022 from Open Research Institute. Um, what we're going to talk about today is what we've done over the past week, what we have planned over the next week, if we need any resources to do the work, and if we have any roadblocks. All right, so uh, go ahead, Paul, you have the floor. Good morning or whatever time it is for everybody. Um, morning for me and I'm half asleep still. Uh, we made some progress on getting a, an SR1 based test environment working in the remote lab. The SR1 is a device from IECA, I believe they pronounce it that way, um, which receives DVBS2 and understands GSE and it's intended for data applications. Uh, this will be one of many commercial devices we can use to validate implementations. In this case, it will be implementing a transmitter and using the SR1 as the corresponding receiver. So that device is now on the network in the remote lab. It can be accessed through a serial port, which is hosted on uh, one of the VMs and also through an ethernet port, two ethernet ports, actually one for management, which does what all a serial port can do, plus other things, and then a traffic port. Uh, then it has two RF inputs, and these can be hooked up at, on demand to any RF source that we have in a lab uh, in the IF uh, frequency range. I think it covers something like 950 to 2000 megahertz. Um, I've done some prototyping on this using our old standby uh, GNU radio flow graph for transmitting. And this is working, uh, which puts us back into where we were in about 2018. Uh, so we now have, and once again, the ability to test a DVB S2 transmit from GNU radio through this commercial device. But now we can do it completely in the remote lab. And I'm working on a, uh, a demonstration video of this. Um, hopefully in the next few days, we'll be able to see exactly how that works uh, from a fully remote lab perspective. Uh, we've put other commercial devices online. I think we've already talked about the, uh, the deck tech boards, uh, one of which is in a, in a VM and the other of which, no, one is in Aperture and one is in Hello Kitty, two standalone Windows machines because the supported hardware uh, is Windows based. Um, Maybe one of those will move back into the VM once we're convinced that we know what we're doing because the problems turned out not to be VM related as we suspected they were when we moved into a special machine. Um, moving forward on that, the video and uh, trying to get all the ins and outs of working fully virtually for this test scenario is what's ahead of me. And I don't have any blockers that I know of. Thank you. All right, next on the list is uh, Anshul Makar. You have the floor. Thank you. Uh, for this week, uh, I was trying to integrate uh, ADI's uh, reference design and firmware along with uh, DBBS2. So, and I'm taking help from uh, whatever is here, F5OEO. So he's helping me. Uh, and yeah, so taking the reference script of what has been done for Pluto design and integrating it for ZC706, uh, facing some issues, resolving them and moving forward. Uh, apart from this, uh, involved with some, other of, some of the other ORI activities like um, Codec2 and one more project. So yeah, that's my week. All right, thank no you. Focus. Thanks. And do you need any additional resources or any any problems that you uh, that you need help with? Uh, not for the timing. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Uh, next on the list is Sawato. Please, uh, you have the floor. Um, hi. Hi. Um, so last this past week, um, I've been trying to identify an, an issue that Everest found. <laughs> That uh, basically, the when he's changing the 
consolation around it, it sometimes the, the encoders sometimes get stuck and i think i found the the reason um it's something in, in the in the constellation mapper i did not catch uh, because reasons <laughs> uh, essentially the i to minimize resources i chose to only provide uh, like one table for QPSK, one for 8PSK, one, you know, and so on and so forth. But for 16 and 32 APSK, uh, the amplitude changes with the code rate. So I just left, okay, you know, I can do one of each, but you know, the it's one table for 16 and, and one for 32. So the, the test would um, write the the table if needed, and that sort of masked the, the issue of going back and forth because you, you know, obviously you need to stop. Um, so I, I plan to fix uh, well this issue that that gets the the, the encoder stuck and um, allow supporting more or all the the um, all the combinations. It's it's not too much more in terms of area and um, so I, th I think it's 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 worth yeah and yeah, that, and that is that, it. yeah that makes sense that's a that's a critical trade-off for uh for a lot of what we're uh dealing with and looking at thank you all right so so do you need any additional resources or are everything's no, it, it, no, just, it, yeah yeah I, I I used uh, I, I'm trying to revive the setup I had uh, in the past. <laughs> yeah. And obviously I don't have the same Vivado version, so I'm using uh, I think ChocoCat the twenty Vivado twenty twenty dot one. Okay. And that is it, really. Okay. Yeah. Just uh, if you if, you, if anything you need, please uh, let us know. Sure. Uh, Thanks. So what a few questions. So I'm using Vivado 2020.2 uh, to integrate DVBS. So I think, uh, will that be fine? Or do I need to upgrade to 2021? Uh, it, it should be fine. It, it, the, 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 the issue is more when you try to run the block design tickle script, it mm -hmm. will complain. And sometimes it will say, I don't know, complain random stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but but it should work. Like there's no, no nothing functional. Okay, got you. Yeah, it did complain, and I just uh, asked it to ignore the. Uh, version yeah, for Pluto, <laughs> I don't know which version of Everest is using. Like locally in my machine, I just said ignore check. Yeah, and, yeah. and it seems to work. So, yeah. Okay, and second thing, do you have any documentation of address map that? Uh, this IP is using so that I can avoid those address map, those addresses. Uh, well, the the base address you can map like freely. Mm -hmm. Let me. See. There is the, the encoder has a, a small um, address map. I can paste the the link in the chat. Yeah. Just a second. Yeah, I paste in the repository. There is a markdown version that is generated by the 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 thing I used to generate the register map. The, it's called Air HDL. And mm -hmm. um, the markdown one is sort of rendered by Git, GitHub, so it sort of okay. looks nicely. Got you. Okay. Thanks, Arthur. Sure. Yeah. Thank you both. Okay, any other any other comments or uh, or questions or needs? Okay, uh, Everest, you have the floor. Yeah, okay. So um uh, last week the main uh, um the main work was to um to try to um, um try different setup uh, we 
which mean uh, try to swapping between mod codes. Uh, and um, swapping uh, mod codes at uh, QPSK is working. And then I try to swap from uh, QPSK to 8PSK. And then I have some issue because it's stuck. So um, I report it to uh, Shoto and then uh, he find the bug. So it's, uh, it's a very good, uh, good step. Um, on the other side, I learn also to uh, shoot to exactly what need the, the framer. We can, I, I don't know how we can uh, really uh, um, uh, call it, but um, how to send with IAO uh, exactly uh, DMI size and uh, how to handle it uh, from uh, the PS perspective to uh, the PL. So um, right now it's very clear, so, so it's, uh, it's good. Um, the next step I think will be to uh, integrate uh, the transport stream first and then uh, the GS after that. So um, thanks to Paul to uh, set up all the, uh, all the testing equipment as uh, we can be ready uh, to test uh, hopefully soon. Um, in France, the journey is uh, more and more sunny. And uh, as soon as it's sunny, I go paragliding. So I, I could have some pause to try it. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's it. But I think that we uh, we move forward uh, not so slowly because it's uh, working uh, is uh, quite uh, quite efficient. Back to you. Well, thank you. So we have an opportunity to show this off uh, and record and and uh, and publish um, on the a, a, a minor event at uh, University of San Diego on the 26th of April and then a uh, IEEE meeting on the 4th of May. Um, so I'll talk on Slack about that a little bit more uh, because it's an opportunity to show this stuff working over the air in person and to publish the, the results, um, you know, on to the repo and all of our channels. So it sounds like we're, we have some things to show and that's uh, a wonderful place to be. So well, th th there is already uh, something to show, which means that as soon as we are uh, working, we try to test more and more um, features, but some basic features like uh, um, having a, uh, well, just swapping from uh, mod codes at QPS key or 8 PSK is working, which means that uh, I think that we can already demonstrate some uh, adapt adaptative channels uh, uh, streaming. Uh, the, the, the easiest way is to send transport stream. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that there is already uh, something to show. Agree. Yeah, I'm very excited. This is extremely good news. So I will um, will coordinate on Slack and figure out how to how to present it, show it, and also uh, Everest. I think uh, there was an opportunity for you to uh, present at Friedrichshafen in uh, this coming summer at the SDR forum. Um, so it sounds like yeah. some good news there too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I already send them. Uh, just a title and they are very exciting to uh, <laughs> to accept it and they want to to have more details on that oh good um, yeah 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 um, so i need to write uh, uh, something uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not my uh, prefer uh, task but yeah no um, <laughs> no that's very good it's, 
If there's anything okay. that, that we can do to, to help you, uh, please let us know. And on at Friedrichshafen, yeah. we do have a booth. So the uh, M17 and OpenRTX teams yeah. uh, have a booth. I, I don't know if you're going to be there in person or if you're going to present virtually. Well, I, no, I would be uh, even, I, I think that I, I would send them a, a video. But okay. Un unfortunately, at this time, so... I don't know. I don't know if they need that. I have to uh, well uh, virtual uh, conversations through Zoom for question and answer. But at this time, uh, I have already a full. Um, well, uh, I'm not available, so I don't right. know. Right. Okay. Be good or not, but maybe if there is another. Um, well, uh, I have to check, but. If there is another person who can uh, try to uh, uh, answer the question, it would be good. Okay. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Yeah. If, uh, okay. but yeah, we'll uh, we'll also spread the word at the event about the the your presentation. Thank you so much for doing this. I think it will be very well received, and you'll get a lot of very positive feedback from from the effort. It's good work. Okay, any other last questions or comments or needs? Is there anything that you need me to go get for you or to uh, to try to do? Uh, maybe as uh, Anshul uh, say, I don't have uh, the access, uh, well, I don't have any access member to the GitHub right now. Y yes, not... yeah, he, he wrote me. <laughs> well, we will we will make it work for you. Well, it's not a big issue, but uh, I need to have some commits, and uh, I maybe want to um, uh, start uh, a complete uh, Pluto SDR firmware using the DUBS2. Yes. Uh, HTL. So uh, there is on already a component I do on my uh, own GitHub, uh, which could be uh, go to ORE. And uh, then after that, have a complete firmware, which could be um, easy to integrate for people who want to uh, to test. Okay. Yeah, we will fix it. We'll make it happen. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And so for just briefly on my end, um, the uh, so I have not yet figured out how to get HDL coder to do the last easy part. All the hard part works. Uh, for taking MATLAB scripts and and bringing them all the way through to our uh, our remote lab, uh, so I'm a little bit baffled. Um, so we'll, I'll keep working on that. I'm at the point where I'm going to reach out to to both Math, MathWorks and Xilinx and try to figure out what exactly is the issue with it refusing to work uh, at the last easy part of it's the device is actually being programmed by MATLAB, which is calling uh, Vivado uh, command line scripts should be easy, um, but I think we'll figure it out and then we'll be able to test over the air with the uplink side. So this work uh, in MATLAB HDL coder is um, is using the uh, M17 protocol for uh, you know to to uh, to process and to to present um, to the to the remote lab work uh, remote lab uh, equipment. We have another um, uh, opportunity for both the Codec 2 work and M17 protocol, M17 uplink, um, the, the, uh, the work that we're doing to take the M17 9600 bit per second version and move it to, um, to microwave, uh, because that may involve some, some changes to the, the protocol. So all of that work is going, is going on and is going to be presented on the 4th of May. We have a, a joint meeting between the amateur radio community and IEEE uh, on the 4th of May. So, so there'll be a recording of that presentation, the slides are in progress, and, and there will be a lot of uh, written work. Uh, a side effect of this is that the M17 protocol really needs a justification document or a, a document that describes like uh, why do you do this, essentially an implementation guide. 
And I'm pleased to report that there's an awful lot of momentum and work in that direction. There's uh, several volunteers, both at ORI and at M17 that are working on this and somebody from the community who's very interested in working on it will be at uh, an in-person event in the Eastern part of the United States at NearFest uh, that will interface directly with the M17 team to provide additional writing, uh, review, uh, content creation. Uh, so the overall goal of this is to have our uplink side uh, to get uh, a really good treatment, to have not just the protocol specification, but also to have a justification or implementation guideline uh, document, because we really do want to use it for, um, for education and to show off uh, good open source work. Uh, so all of that stuff is also going on and will uh, only benefit the the downlink um, and the the transponder and, and downlink side, because if you have quality stuff bolted up to your uh, system as an uplink and you're able to interface with it at a, a high level and to, uh, you know, to, to control the flow of information in the right way, then your system uh, has all of the ingredients to be more successful. So these are the things that are going on and they'll be going on all the way uh, through throughout April and May. Uh, the, the eventual goal, we're looking forward to August to present a working, as working as possible uh, over the air end and demo at uh, DEF CON, which is an extremely large event. Um, you know, we're expecting um, you know, mid 20,000 people and almost all of them would be impressed and, and engaged in the work. Uh, so that's kind of the the goal that I'm I'm trying to or, uh, organize the work for. Uh, uh, events that are in this category are Friedrichshafen, which is coming up much much sooner, and um, you know there's a few others around the calendar. Uh, so so that's the perspective from from where I'm sitting and and what I'm trying to enable in order to showcase the work that you all are doing. It's uh, really quite wonderful. So thank you very much for all of your efforts and attention. And please let me know if there's anything that I can do to help. All right, any last comments or questions before we close for the day? All right, thank you everybody. See you in Slack and see you next week.